G'day, Ziggy D here, back with part 5 of my Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls Act 5 first ever playthrough. Now you'll notice my Demon Hunter is looking much more badass than in the last episode, and if you've been uh, checking out my other content then you'll know that I've been playing some adventure mode on the Demon Hunter, and uh, I've got some new legendaries, yeah, a few, a few cool things here, and uh, have created a pretty sick strafe perma build for myself, and uh, I thought... Each episode, I might as well take this opportunity to like just play a new build each episode as we progress through this uh, act series. And yes, I have kitted up my Templar. He's wearing some Hellfire action. He's got some other gear there. I've kind of just crafted some stuff for him and found some legendaries. And uh, I've also gave him a Nagel Ring because it's pretty hard to get magic find in this game. And maybe he'll help us get some more legendaries. But we've got a million deeps and... Uh... <laughs> 8.6 million toughness there. Doing pretty alright. We'll be playing on Torment 1 difficulty now, which is somewhat comfortable, but still pretty challenging sometimes, especially since I don't know what we're encountering. So, let's jump straight back into it. We just finished killing the boss, uh, Urzael, I think, and uh, we're ready to talk to Tyrael now. Urzael has fallen. The Reapers will not be able to hold the city without him. You have saved Westmarch, my friend. But we still don't know why Malthael took the stone. He's getting stronger every moment, and our time is running out. That strange woman you brought here believes she can help. She insisted on speaking with you immediately. Alright, let's go talk to her then. She is the mystic, I believe, so she should be down here. And uh, let's see if we can find out. Yes, there she is standing in by the mystic Jesus, there. I know how to find Malthael, but you will not like what I have to tell you. What a surprise. <laughs> There is only one person who knows how to find Malthael. She waits for you in the blood marsh. And you oh, are Adria. Oh, Adria. At last, yes. We've been waiting for revenge on Adria ever since Act 2, Diablo 3 Vanilla, when uh, she took Cain's life so viciously, so heartbreakingly. Why is that? Who are you? Someone has to make sure you don't kill Adria before you find out where Malthael is. Come if you like, but Adria is still going to die. Alright, come on Lorath then. Let's uh let's head on out. So you'll notice I'm also using no face cam in this, and that's because I've decided to record with Fraps to give you guys a, a bit better uh a bit better visuals. It just ends up looking a bit smoother. So I thought I'd go for that route rather than the face cam on this guys. You guys can enjoy some more high quality gameplay to uh, check out the new act, but uh, man, what do we got in here? Some Tusks and Bogans. I know in, uh, bl in the uh, BlizzCon announcement, they called these guys Boggins, but uh, in Australia, this is how you spell Bogan, and uh, for those of you guys who don't know, a Bogan in Australia is kind of like a hick in the US. It's uh, a guy who wears, you know, like a singlet, his, his flip flops, sits outside on his front porch drinking a VB, maybe uh, listen to some uh, good old ACDC, some Akadaka, and or maybe 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 some Metallica and stuff like that, which I I like all these things myself. But when you uh, endorse the uh, bogan lifestyle, it's when you take that sort of thing to the extreme. And uh, these guys apparently are bogans, so <laughs> we'll watch out for them. But what have we got here? Indeed. It does seem obvious. I'm sure though, you know, we should be able to blast our way through that, but I guess not. So you'll notice I am just, yes indeed, destroying face now. I've got some pretty sick stuff going on. You guys can check out the build in a bit more detail in the other build video. I'll try and remember to put that in the description below as well, but you'll be able to find that on my channel. And uh, just using some sick legendary procs and uh, perma strafe from this awesome crossbow here. Strafe no longer cross hatred. Uh, pretty cool stuff. It's also really mobile, so it's like fun to kind of dodge AoE attacks and things with it. And uh, get out lots of uh, lots of extra damage. I'm also stacking some crushing blow, which helps us uh, work down the health of pretty high health enemies like these guys pretty quickly, pretty effective. There are guide stones littered across the blood marsh that will lead us to the main one. The guide stones are useless to most, but we reveal the correct path to a nephew such as yourself. All right. Oh man, this music's awesome. I gotta turn it up. It sounds really cool. Is that ambient? No music. There we go. I haven't fully heard all of the new music in the expansion pack yet, so let's enjoy some of that. Oh, the Blood Marsh! No escape this time, Adria. Remember to get the information we need before you. Fine. 
<laughs> Alright, Laura, I get it. So, these guys are apparently a tricksy sort of enemy. I, I'm expecting we'll run into some traps and, uh... Some, like I saw in BlizzCon that they hide up in towers and throw traps at you and things like that. And now these guys, these, this guy here apparently hurls them at you as well, I think, so... You need to watch out for that as well. Ah, oh, music. Sick. So you'll notice when I destroy scenery sometimes, I'm getting like an, an awesome speed boost. That's uh, that's my cool braces I'm wearing here. Every time I destroy a wreckable object, you gain a short burst of speed. It's uh, it makes a strafe build a lot more fun to play because you can just like every now and then just blow up a piece of scenery and get a get a nice speed boost like that. There we go. There's a barrel. Looks like we're heading down this way, but I kind of want to check up in here first. What's this bridge? Just an arbitrary bri bridge in the middle of nowhere. Oh, he's summoning the- oh, and he's like, he summons them up and then charges into them to throw money. Unfortunately for him, we were up on top of a bridge. I might have, like, clear out this zone a little bit. Oh, we got our first- whoa, we just- <laughs> I obliterated them. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. <laughs> because they have very low health, uh, like a low health base elite type. I noticed this in Reaper of Souls, like, we're seeing more elites on really low health minions and things like that. And, uh, they just tend to die super quickly, like that. Oh, we got a pink Adriash satchel. I'm guessing they haven't finished the uh, finished the animation on that fully yet. Understand? He was born into privilege and wealth, and he spent every moment of his life trying to protect it. I was his flesh and blood, but he cared more about the names in books and the faces of the paintings on the walls than his living daughter. Some family woes there. Understandable, you know. <laughs> they got a bit of Diablo lineage in their family. Alright. Alright, let's check out the Guidestone then. Alright, it seems to be activated. Oh, hold on, here we go. Okay, so... Ah, I see. So, we're left down to these three. We want to activate another two to find the uh, correct one, it seems. Do you know what fear is? The fear of who you are. Fear of what your own blood would do if they knew what you were. No, you could never understand it. People look to you as a savior. Have you ever thought about the lives you've taken? They were fathers, lovers, daughters. I've got a uh, lightning storm on here, so I'm going to pop my vengeance. Vengeance works still very well on our uh, strafe. You can't aim the Gatling guns as well as you can with a normal sort of attack. But uh, I'm also using the uh, the rune that kind of just makes darkness pour out of you and uh, works really well as a nice AoE, so we use that. So we should be able to finish killing this guy off. There we go, he was pretty tough. Now picking up white so I can get some more salvaging materials. I want to craft up a set for my uh, m my uh, monk, I think, needs a set pretty soon. As well as my barb, I want to craft up for both of those. Give the uh, crafting system a bit of a test as well. I see some traps up there. I kind of want to go check that out. Lorath is getting stuck into it there. Right, let's, check out, let's check out what's up over here first. Oh, they got like this massive fortress! They're throwing traps down at me. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's an event! Alright, let's uh, kill off these guys. Reach the top of the hill, okay. Oh, there's a, like a, there's a bogan tower. They're up in there throwing, throwing their VB tinnies down at me. <laughs> wow, it's pretty, it's a pretty tanky tower. Come on, work it down. Oh! <laughs> oh, awesome. Alright, time for some vengeance. Oh yeah, just work our way through here. Bogan trappers work down the next Bogan tower. I'll just keep like aiming at it. I should be able to. There we go. <laughs> Destroying. <laughs> this is pretty fun fighting our way up into this fortress here. Looks like there will be a bit of a boss at the end as well. That's pretty cool. The final Bogan tower to get reached the top of the hill. Oh no, we're taking a lot of damage. Oh, I think what some of you guys wanted me to point out the uh, potion I'm using as well is a legendary potion. It's the. Uh, Bottomless Potion of Kool-Aid, which allows us to burst through wall walls, so when they throw up their walls we can burst through those. So, uh, very uh, appropriate since it's Kool-Aid. 
And you just be like, oh yeah, and smash through those walls. So there goes the boss, and I want to kill off these Bogan Towers too. Got uh, some nice XP and gold there. Yeah, gold rewards are very handy for the uh, enchanting, which tends to chew up quite a bit of your gold reserves. But I mean, we just, we just dominated that hill. Wave passage eliminated. Is that what we just did, or was that something else? Oh no, that was one of the uh, Nephilim Guidestones, okay. So I've got a few doors around- oh these are- okay, so these are the passage. It's kind of like, um, Act 2? Is it Act 2 is the uh, desert in Diablo 2? The desert in Diablo 2 where you kind of have to figure out which is the right uh, tomb of uh, the uh, boss in there. Oh man, I'm horrible, I can't remember, it's been so long since I played Diablo 2. But uh, I think we need to find more of those Nephilim Rift Stones before we just go poking in those. So we can hopefully avoid the wrong ones. Although I guess you could just clear them for some extra XP. Now I got a waypoint up here. Alright, it looks like there's a Nephilim Guidestone over in that direction. Let's head over and get that then. So I'm thinking uh, next one, I, I found a, a uh, two-handed crossbow that uh, lets us do like some Reign of Vengeance action. It's got something to do with Reign of Vengeance on it, so maybe for the uh, next episode I'll, I'll create a build for that to play with and we'll have a bit of fun with different spec in each one. You guys will get a chance to see a lot of different uh, Demon Hunter goodness, which I know a lot of you guys are keen to see some Demon Hunters. There's not many Demon Hunter streamers or YouTubers out there at the moment, so we'll get some of those. I know one person that would have been able to make a lot of good Demon Hunter content would have been Shinobi Vita. Unfortunately, he hasn't gotten uh, Reaper of Souls beta access yet. But uh, there's another one up there. I guess we kind of have to head around to get to that. Yeah, Sh Shinobi unfortunately didn't get in. But uh, I do main Demon Hunter myself as well, so happy to bring you guys some Demon Hunter action. So there's one of the entrances, but we need to find the correct one. We could kind of probably guess now. We're down to a 50-50 guess. We know it's not wave or wind, and I don't know if which one that is, based on the uh, sign. I don't actually know which one signs correlate to which. That doesn't look like wave or wind. It looks like could be earth or ice or fire or something. I didn't know which the other, what the other ones actually were. But uh, let's we'll, we'll try and find the actual Nephilim Guidestones. We'll do it the correct way. Those massive, like, flippy traps are pretty hilarious. Alright, here's another guidestone. What one do we eliminate from here? Enter the leaf passage. Okay, so we now know... Oh, that was the one we were just at. Alright, cool. So if we had it just went in there... Oh, that makes sense. It did kind of look like a leaf, I guess. <laughs> Thought it would be like another element or something, not leaf. It's a leaf-type Pokemon entrance. <laughs> okay. Passage to Corvus. Let's check it out. What's this? Spirit totem? Is it? Oh, it's something I destroy, I see. Oh, ancient! I get an ancient armament from it. Okay, so let's get some more loot. Unsettled stone? Oh, that's interesting. I'm just gonna like interact with stuff in these new zones because it's all pretty interesting to- <laughs> and pretty interesting and new to me. I've got another- a flesh shaman. Man, that looks- that thing looks sick! Orbiter shielding poison enchanter. I don't know what they do though. Are they- he- oh, he was about to do something, but then we killed him. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out what they do pretty soon. Here's another one. Oh, they summon... Okay, so they actually summon these guys. They're actually summoners. And they seem to hurl bolts of fire at us as well, so... We'll kill these guys, I think. Keen to, uh... Hopefully we get some nice legendary drops in this series as well. Pretty nice. I think we got one so far. But I'd like to find some more. I'm really keen on getting a Calamity. Would be nice. Uh, or the- I've got one half of the Donatas set, so uh, getting the other half of that would be pretty sweet as well. Because uh, it's got these new vault affixes on it that would be allow us to create some sort of sick vault build. But uh, the new legendaries in this, in Reaper of Souls beta so far look really awesome. Some of them pretty OP. Look at all these guys! The Scarabs. Oh, there we go! There's a legendary just as I was talking about it! <laughs> awesome! Let's uh, kill off these guys and check it out. It's a ring. There's lots of different legendary rings, so it could be- could be anything. 
There were some really OP rings, but they actually they used to absorb different types of elemental damage. But they actually got removed because they were too OP for a while. But they might be coming back. I think I might already have one of these. What is this? Band of Hollow Whispers. This ring occasionally haunts nearby enemies. I think I do have one of these already. It's got a pretty nice defensive stats on it. It's a very defensive ring. And I'm not sure what Haunt actually does. I think that Haunt is in the uh, Witch Doctor skill. So I'm not going to use that. I've already got the uh, Ring of Royal Grandeur, which I could actually use in place of a set item. And uh, the Avarice Band, which uh, increases our Golden, golden Health Globe pickup radius as we pick up gold. So each pile of gold we pick up increases our radius for a short duration. So it works pretty well when we're like trying to pick up lots of health globes and stuff. Which I think I'm I think I'm actually running I am running Blood Vengeance, so that is pretty helpful. Okay, we've got another door here. Oh, we've got an actual event. Okay, let's activate the lever then. Find a way to enter enter the treasure hoard. Oh, is that in is that in here? Or did we just go through there? Okay, no. Find a way to enter there, okay. So it looks like there's another lever over here. Getting it levered. Is there another lever we have to activate? There's probably a few. Here's another one. It might be four. Oh no, there's two. The last two. I, I need to learn, to learn to read. Okay, so... Oh, there we go. Open the door. Oh, multiple chests. Let's see if we get anything from the massive respondent chest in there. Oh yeah, a few, few topazes and rubies. Some more items there. Let's open these other little chests. So you'll notice, like... As we pick up the gold, our health, uh, our radius increases by quite a bit. What's uh? I like to pop my rain of vengeance there to uh, destroy scenery more than anything. <laughs> it makes it much faster to go. Every now and then, I destroy like a crate or a barrel or something or some piece of scenery that just drops like 15 piles of gold all at once. I think it's kind of the, they've changed the way that these sorts of drops works. So every now and then, you just get this massive explosion of gold, which is pretty awesome. Especially because there's a lot of legendaries that proc off gold finding now. You can do something like wear the gold skin, there's an item that gives you XP when you pick up gold. And there's uh, ones that deal damage when you pick up gold or give you armor when you pick up gold. Oh, there's one that deal damage when you pick up health globes, but this sort of thing works all with pick up radius. There's lots of different interesting... You could make like a gold pick up build that's actually like offensively oriented. <laughs> Pretty interesting stuff. But here we go, we've got the runes, or the ruins of Corvus. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course we'll kill her. He he's not very firm about doing his job. His job was to like make sure we didn't kill her straight away, but <laughs> he's not doing it. But we'll we'll find. I'm sure we'll find out what we need to find out before we kill her. Although I don't know, she did kill Cain. I like how these just like little spirits are popping out when we're killing these bits of sceneries. Are they actually doing something bad or <laughs> is it just like a little animation? Resplendent chest. Getting some more oh, Imperial Amethyst. I do need a few more Imperial gems. I've started crafting up some higher level gems. Uh, needs uh, needs quite a few Imperials to do it. It's eventually it's going to cost a lot of gold, but the uh, gold cost has actually been removed in the beta for now. So people can test them out. But uh, I imagine the gold's going to be something like 10 million each time you craft one. Alright, uh, this place is a bit labyrinth-like. But uh, thanks to all the uh, nice AoE we're rocking, able to destroy all these little scarabs. <laughs> Look at them all chasing us. I did see these guys at BlizzCon as well. <laughs> Pretty cool. You just eventually get this little horde following you. Let's kind of watch them just like appear around us. They should just like scur scurry out. Oh, we got braces from a barrel or something. That legendary. I'm actually trying to stack a fair bit of magic find. I've got 83 at the moment, which is quite a bit for in this point. For not having like my own, uh, what, what's the temple? I got the uh, Nagel Ring. I don't have my own Nagel Ring. But uh, this is, oh, XI Braces Norm Unique 17. Awesome, I love that one. <laughs> this is the Picking Up Gold Grants experience one. I have one of these already. But uh, the, as you can tell, hasn't been named or given art yet. We are in beta, guys. But uh, let's keep those aside now. At the very least, they're going to be some legendary crafting materials. Because I'm keen to start crafting some of the new set and uh, legendary items. And also enchanting my existing legendaries requires disenchanting of other legendaries. So uh, even finding crappy legendaries is actually pretty satisfying because uh, 
getting it's it's not quite like how many broomstones you ended up rocking in uh, Diablo 3 vanilla. You kind of really need the uh, crafting mats in this because they're actually used to make your legendaries better, so you can chew through them pretty quickly. So even finding crappy legendaries is pretty rewarding. And in fact, for a while there, I was finding all good legendaries I didn't want to get rid of, and I was like, I really need to find some crappy legendaries so I can actually start doing some more crafting. <laughs> so it's not something I ever expected to have myself feeling. Oh, look at all the scarabs! You'll notice we're charming. We have like, I have like an AoE charm that procs every now and then when we hit. So all the scarabs were fighting each other for a second there. The music in here is really epic. Oh, it looks like we've reached a bit of a dead end in here. Carve our way back through the scarabs. Oh, here we go. Find the entrance to the Great Hall. Ooh, temp treble the blood marsh. Where you've been hiding, Malthiel. Pandemonium. The angels will never suffer us to live. They cannot accept the fact that we may choose our own path. At least demons are not so rigid in their beliefs. Oh, Adria, what are you doing? Oh! Oh, sacrificed herself! Is this Adria? Did she just, like, transform? I do not need angels or demons. I will make my own fate and seal yours. Wait, before I was saying that Adria killed Cain, I got confused between her and Magda. We already killed Magda. Still, we wanted to take out Adria anyway. She just, like, got away, and there was, like, no closure for that. She got away so she could be involved in an expansion. But, uh, oh man, she does some pretty serious damage. Let's check out some of her attacks. She's like, oh, she's like calling up all this blood. Oh, these little goopy things. <laughs> she's got a big cleaving attack there and firing out little, uh, these little AoE effects there. I don't think I want to stand in those. But, uh, the crushing blow is taking care of her health pretty quickly. Though, as we get her health lower, that'll become less and less effective. But, uh, oh man, like, look, check out all the blood. Rain of Vengeance. Screwing up my Diablo 3 lore. Lore, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I tend to, I'm a pretty big text skipper in action RPGs. I'm all about the, uh, the gameplay, and I tend to, uh, miss a lot of the lore stuff. Although, in Diablo 3, I've kind of paid a bit more attention to it than I have in other ones. But, uh, yeah. Don't listen to me for any hints on lore. Let's grab this healing well, because we're taking quite a bit of damage. Oh man, that stuff hurts. See if we can actually take it down here. Whoa, okay, there we go. Yes, the crushing blow for the win. Adria's note here. Let's check this out, and then we'll talk to uh, Lorath. Diablo will return. I have done what I can to ensure it. He always finds a way. In your heart of hearts, you know this. Alrighty, come on, Lorath, what do you got for me? an image of Pandemonium before she died. She was searching for Malthea. So he must be there. Alright, so in the next episode we'll talk to Tyrael again and continue our adventure and I'll probably have worked up a new build for you guys by then so uh, we'll get to see some other sort of Demon Hunter shenanigans though this strafe build is pretty uh, kick-ass you saw we just devastated Adria there and uh, pretty, pretty fun I'm really uh, enjoying the playthrough of Act 5 hopefully you guys are enjoying it too anyway, that's it for now I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching